take a look at these two animations and I want you to try to see how are they similar. I'll give you two more seconds. All right, I'll tell you. Both of them are using flat graphic design elements in really interesting ways to make those animations really unique and really take them to the next level. I had the idea for this a couple days ago and I made those two animations and today I want to break down how I used those elements, how I made those animations, and how you can implement it in your own work to add your own voice and kind of visual flair to your animations. All right, so this first one was created entirely in geometry nodes because I just love that workflow. So the first thing I did was I hopped into Blender to create all of these really quick cut graphics. So it ended up being a mix of fonts, uh, geometric shapes. I wanted to have a variety of really small objects and really, really big blocky objects and a few gradients because the gradients look really cool in this process. Once I exported all of those images, I was able to compile them in Adobe Premiere to get them to be about a second, maybe half a second long each for their edit. If you don't have Premiere, you can use Blender Sequence Editor and it's gonna give you the same exact thing. Now comes the kind of technical tough part, which is implementing these image textures in geometry nodes to create a really cool effect. I ended up having to make a custom mapping setup in geometry nodes just to make sure this video is mapped properly to affect all the particles that I'm gonna throw on it. Now, the reason why I think this whole process looks so cool is it's unique. You can't really create these things with um, Blender's kind of inbuilt tools or textures. You have to make them by hand and then cut them together in Premiere and throw it back in there. And that creates a really cool workflow for you as an artist to have your own creative expression and make this unique to you. Now, I love to make seamless loops, so I ended up creating instances of this whole moving system. I ran it down the line, ran my camera through it, and you can make this awesome effect, kind of concert visuals looking, which is a great use case for this. Now, I'm skipping a lot of steps here uh, if you're trying to replicate this whole thing. Um, so if you're new to Blender and you want to learn the exact step-by-step -step of both of these animations, that's on Patreon right now for tier two and tier three members. And for those of you who don't wanna pay a subscription, there's a free tier on Patreon and there's some really cool tutorials for those of you guys on the uh, free membership. So you can check that out linked in the description. I wanted to make this really bright, kind of booming, uh, so I ended up making making the world uh, a bright red color, the particles white, kind of an inverted kind of vibe. I think it looks really cool. Now I'm rendering this in Eevee, so I went ahead and exaggerated the motion blur to get that stretched out particle look so when they fly by, I think it really ties it all together. And there we go, that's the whole process to create that animation. I love it, it's simple, but it's cool and it's effective and you can really follow this and come up with your own really cool ideas. All right, let's work on the next scene. All right, so this is a really cool one and a lot more complex than the first one. So I'm gonna get the graphics animated in After Effects just to give them a little bit extra movement, make them a little more custom. So for this first bit, I'm just gonna have these big blocky pieces animate one right after another just to keep it really quick. Now I wanna have this big wall of text, so I'm gonna use this free tool called Animation Composer just to kind of give them all scale in randomly. It's really, really cool looking. And for the last bit, I just went ahead and designed this little structure thing in Photoshop, and I'll be able to animate that in Blender with some, uh, some masking and things like that. All right, now this next part, I have to figure out how to pace out these three sets of graphics to make it feel good and fit in the length of the animation. So I'm gonna place these first big blocky ones really soon after the animation starts. What's really nice about this is I can use native textures to animate out all of these graphics so you can have more control there and add a little bit of flair in your own kind of personal taste into this part. Now, before I go any farther with the graphics and figuring them out, I wanna go ahead and create some elements around the scene so that it looks cool and just kind of create a bit of an environment. So using image textures, I'm just gonna create a rocky ground uh, for the floor and the image textures and all that maps together really nicely. Now, I'm gonna create a really simple geometry node system to randomly place pillars around it. You can use a really nice seed value uh, to make it exactly how you want it to look. All right, so very soon after those big green blocks animate out, I'm gonna animate in the text and I'm also gonna duplicate it above to make it even taller, just to make it look really big and really grand. I like these foreground elements, so once you see the text animate in, I'm also gonna have even closer text animate right past the camera. It makes this really cool foreground kind of out of focus feel, kind of right in your face. It's a very cool effect. And once we're past the wall of text, we're gonna animate in these really cool structures to kind of create this tunnel, it's cool, it's sci-fi looking, it's interesting to look at, it almost doesn't really need to make sense, it just has to look cool and be interesting to look at, and that's sort of my goal when creating things like this. 
to animate in those structures, I'm gonna make the Voronoi really big scale because once you see him go bop, 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 like animate in like that, it looks really cool to me. So scale is gonna be really big for the transition. Still Voronoi to keep it really cool looking. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's the whole scene. I think it just looks so awesome. And you could take this concept and apply it to so many other ideas uh, for your concert visuals, for your motion graphics, for any of your VFX pieces. There's so much to apply this to uh, broad scale with this whole concept. And that's why I love it so much. Uh, but that's it, that's the whole idea. Hopefully you can kind of take it and apply it to your own style. Again, if you wanna learn those two graphics, the first and the second one, they're on Patreon right now, completely step-by-step. Step. You can learn everything that I did, everything that I was thinking about. Patreon has become kind of my MoGraph hub lately and I love being on there. So if you wanna support the channel, that's the best place to do it. With that being said, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial.